y'all, Mrs. Yukin here, and I'm going to talk to you today about the arithmetic combination of functions in this hopefully less than five minute flip. You should remember this from Algebra 2, which is why it shouldn't take us that long to get through. We're going to talk about the sum, difference, product, and quotient of functions. So if I have these two functions, f and g, then the sum of them is simply the two functions added together. So f of x plus g of x. And that can also be written as f plus g of x. All right, the difference, therefore, is the subtraction between the two, so f of x minus g of x, which can also be written as f minus g of x. And make sure you remember in subtraction that order matters. The product is the two functions multiplied together, so f times g of x, which can be written like this, f g of x. And then the quotient is the... Um, to divided, so f of x divided by g of x. And again, in division, order matters. And we can also write that as f divided by g of x. Let's go ahead and apply these. So let's look at example one down here. In example one, we've got f of x equals x squared and g of x equals one minus x, and we need to find the sum. So I'm simply going to add these two together, x squared plus one minus x. And then because I have OCD, I'm going to go ahead and write them in descending order. So our final answer would be x squared minus x plus one. Moving on to our next example, we've got the same functions, but this time we're finding the difference. And notice it is the f function minus the g function. So I'm going to take x squared and I'm going to subtract one minus x. And I like to put that in parentheses to remind myself that I am subtracting all of the terms of that function. So my final answer would be x squared plus x minus one. All right, now we're moving on to division. So I'm going to take the x function, I'm sorry, the f function, and divide it by the g function. That can't be reduced, so we're going to go ahead and leave it like that. But then it says find the domain, because when we are doing division, we have to be concerned about the domain. We know that we are not ever allowed to divide by zero, unless we're Chuck Norris. So we need to make sure that our denominator does not contain um, any values of x, that would make it equal zero. So in this case, that would be one, x cannot equal one. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this in interval notation. So my domain is going to be all of the values of x from negative infinity up to, but not including one, and then not including one up to positive infinity. So everything except one. All right, that's it. I have not exceeded my five minutes. Make sure you go do the quiz and I will be seeing you in the halls.